Welcome, Internet. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary people, you are listening to Tissues of the Day, episode number seven. We have today with us three wonderful people, myself, Robert Mackay. I will be hosting today the first time ever, which is kind of special. And I'm joined with my co-host, David. Hi. Wonderful. And then the extra special guest, it's very drag race of me, the one, the only, please introduce yourself. Jennifer Perrin. Yeah, welcome, Jen. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Happy to be here. We're happy to have you. To let you know and everyone else out there on the internet, the purpose of this show is it's a show about queer culture, emotions, media, comedy, um, just the wonderful people that we are. And this particular episode is about family. So we're talking about things such as like how our upbringing and our current family dynamics shape us as people, uh, especially as queer kids, because everybody happens Mm -hmm. to be on this show to be queer in some way or another. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. So let's kick it off with our special person, Jennifer Perrin. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for Uh, having me. Yeah, of course. Um, and if anyone wanted to follow you out there on the socials, what uh, what do they follow? Jen Perrin 0 I'm on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Woo! Ooh, I'm on both of the place. <laughs> She's a special character. And let's give a little <laughs> bit of an introduction of like why we know you. So I mean, mm. Jennifer. I think well, I, know, I was I going home one day and Robert was on the side of the street and looked super hungry. And I'm a giving yep. person, so I went into Starbucks and ate my food with him. <laughs> no, let's let's correct that story. She went into <laughs> Star- Starbucks, ate her food, left me outside yeah. while I starved. But I waved. And, yeah, I she like, sure Hi. did. Yeah, in, in addition to pushing me over with that same hand as she walked out because I was at the door. And dropped my wrapper on him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know Robert and David through Queer Prof. A uh, very amazing first queer improv group in Canada that has been going on for a multitude of years, and we perform together. Or was I yeah. supposed to answer that? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, no. That's great. Yes. And more specifically, my very first memory of getting to know you, oh, truly, yes. and I hope you remember this, I do. was that we took an improv class together, and we mm-hmm. were holding hands, and we had to serenade each other, and we sang a song to each other in this, like, it was like a musically-based improv yes. class. And it was a very scary improv class for me because I had not... Uh, had a lot of experience with musical improv and so and uh, so sitting there on the stage and having that little bonding moment it was uh, so warm and beautiful Aww. and and how about David how do you know him let's that's where it's the connection there I yeah do we have the same memory it, he, okay yes we were taking a musical improv class together <laughs> wait a second were we <laughs> David and Robert the same person <laughs> Did you come to Queer Prov when I was show director, maybe? I think I did. Yeah. I think I came to a Queer Prov show that was at 1181. Yeah. Like a long time ago. You were there with Amy Wilding. I think Amr was playing. Yeah. And I think Julie was playing. And then yeah. and then you came and practiced with us. Mm-hmm. And then I fell in love with you. And I was like, we need another handsome brunette man on our... <laughs> Improv team, Robert's fizzling. So David-, <laughs> David is my successor. Yeah, I'm I'm the old school that is going to be laid to improv rest, and David will come in. And but really, wasn't Robert on the group like just a couple months before me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he came in. I think I introduced. I said I said hi to you. And I was like, oh, I'm a friend of Robert's, and because we, we started learning improv together, and you were like, say what? <laughs> no jennifer found david as much the same way she found me she was going into starbucks yeah. and david was outside this time baking but for food. i brought him in with yeah. me because Ugh. of that curly hair yeah. <laughs> and then i was like oh my god i want to spend more time with you will you be my best Aww. friend Oh, wonderful. Well, let's learn a little bit about Jennifer. So we have a segment of the show called Ooh. Rapid Fire Questions. Okay. We're going to throw them at you as quick as possible. We're going to go back and forth between David and myself. And you just answer them from your gut. Don't think about it too much. Okay. Uh, I'll kick it off. David will then go back and forth. Uh, 
So brace yourself, hold onto your chair, grab your tits, do whatever is necessary. And <laughs> I've done that a lot in scenes with you, by the way. Yes. So, Actually, yeah. I can provide a picture of Robert for right now. <gasps> no. Of him wearing one of my bras. <laughs> yeah, David's going to David's gonna throw that in with a little like yes. effects yes. magic. Yeah, it exists. It exists. There's also it. an animated, there's an animated version of that. There was uh-huh. a, there like is. A, I'll send him all the, version. all the versions. No. Yes. <laughs> okay. Rapid fire question. Okay. Oh gosh. Here we go. All right. I'm going to kick it off. What's your middle name? Gail. Pie or cake? Ooh, cake. Last thing you ate? Uh, cashews and a banana. Dance club or pub? Uh, oh, uh, I guess pub, I guess there pub, pub, but dancing in our seats. <laughs> country Lots or city? Of... Sorry? C- country. Country or city. Okay. Cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. Sorry, cat people. In bed, more time uptown or downtown? <laughs> Do you mean do I receive or give more? Either. What do you? What's it like? Your favorite? <laughs> more uptown or more downtown? I like a. I like a, a sixty-eight. Or you give it to me now, I pay you back later. <laughs> <laughs> David, go. <gasps> Last thing you ate was uh, bananas and cashews. She tweeted that one. <laughs> uh, uh, drama or comedy? Oh, uh, mystery action thriller. <laughs> what is a pet peeve of yours when people scrape their teeth on their fork oh <gasps> yeah oh, it same drives me crazy oh my gosh and and when you're like out in a like a nice restaurant and you don't know that person very well there's like an intimacy level i obviously still haven't reached it with robert yet but there's an intimacy level that you have to get to before you can say stop scraping. Well, I also have tried to be a grown up about it, but it's so hard. It just sends the willies up my spine. Yeah, wait, I'm sorry. I'm stopping the game because Robert does this. Robert what? totally does it. <laughs> wait, what do I do? When you you scrape your teeth on your utensils. <gasps> do I? Yes, when you yeah. eat, you, you scrape your fork with your teeth and every time you do it, it's like, I'm yeah. just so clean. I leave nothing behind. I know. Well, I can do that with my lips. <laughs> yeah. So. I can do that with my lips, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got two sets of lips to do it with. Mm. Boom. Compete I with can't that. Compete with that. I can't I, compete with I that. I hope you're not putting food in your vagina. <laughs> No, she does. She has the most impressive kegels. Like I put lineups of like of snacks on the ground, and she just like picks them up. And it, it's just along. like a little little Hoover. Like uh, remember Hungry Hippo? <laughs> <laughs> it just takes a team of scientists to get it out. <laughs> okay. Do we do we want to resume the rapid fire? No, that okay. was amazing. That was all I ever wanted in this game. So uh, what what what? Now we both know Jennifer very well, but like yes. based off of that, what what have we learned about Jennifer other than the fact she has great suction? She, she's I a learned... generous pillow queen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I learned that I do like that. I, I want to take the stick theater mm-hmm. thing from you and give it, give me some now, give me some later. Uh, How do you say it? Ah, you give it to me now and I pay you back later. Mm-hmm. Love that it. is bordering on like sex work, which is amazing and I love it and support it. Um, uh, but... No, repay the favor later. Not oh, I see. But money. that is true. That is very true. That is very Jennifer. Yeah. Jennifer is like the giver first, but yeah. would like something in return. That's yeah. what I've learned about her. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, you, we're going to kick Did it off. Did you learn something? Continue. Did I learn something? Did you learn something? Uh, I learned about... No, I know everything about Jen. There's zero. <laughs> I, <learned. laughs> I know everything about Jen. I've known her too long. It's sad, but true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm going to take us to the next section, then. We're going to go into the theme discussion of the question. Bam, bam, bam. I just hit bam. my mic. Whoops, sorry. Bichu, See, bichu. it's fun. It's hard to do a segue without... Uh, adding some juice. That's why I'm doing it myself, right? Thank you, Jen. She <laughs> said like a sad Roman candle. Uh, our theme for this show is about family. So 
we have a few questions to prompt us and oh wow that is a that is a glass and a half of wine <gasps> it's grape wine? juice bullshit it's fermented it's grape, just grape juice. juice it's grape juice <laughs> fermented <laughs> it's grape juice i love it i love it uh first question hardest you've ever laughed with your family I think the hardest I ever laughed, well, my mom and I were traveling to Calgary and we were sleeping and she farted so loud she woke herself up. And like a dog. <laughs> yeah, totally. And she was like, what was that? And I was like, you just farted. And I couldn't stop laughing. And she denies it to this day. Um <laughs> And gets really mad when I talk about it. Or another time we were at 7-Eleven and I was waiting outside for her. And there was another girl with blonde hair with a white car. And she kept trying to get into this lady's car. But I was laughing so hard. And the lady locked the door. And my mom's like, let me in! Stop messing around! <laughs> and I was trying so hard to roll down the window and, and be like, Mom, you're doing the wrong car. But I was laughing so hard that it took a second. This poor lady. <laughs> and Imagine <my> <laughs> her perspective of like this yeah! crazed elderly woman who was trying to get in her car like, let me in! Stop messing around! I hate it when you do this to me! Which I don't recall ever doing it. And then so Jennifer, like a- Jennifer, that is a stark <laughs> lie for you. You constantly tease your mother and other people in your life. That's but like I don't thing. know if I've ever locked her out of the car is what I'm saying. Have you done the like slow pull away while she's trying to get in? You've no, because I'm me. afraid I've done it to Orion, but I haven't my partner, but I haven't done it to her because she I, I just can see her falling over. But I've done other things. For sure. Like I took her to a big garden and I told her that they removed all the scent from the flowers because it was bothering people's allergies and she loves smelling flowers. So she's like, why did you take me here? This is crap. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wow. What about you, David? I'm curious. What's the hardest you've ever laughed at your family? Um, I think it's probably... A recent one where I was watching Mandalorian with my older brother Toph and um, it's like the second to last uh, episode of the season finale of the show and it's a scene where like I think it's like a battle scene of a very I was very high at the time Um, so yeah it's like some sort of action sequence and there's a female character on top of a tank or something like that and she's like yelling orders to other other um characters in battle and basically she says something like there's a more um, it, there's more of them in the back of the bantha tank or something like that but like just like the way we heard it the way i heard it because i was so high it just sounded like she didn't say like she wasn't speaking english anymore <laughs> and it was it was killing me I was inconsolable, like laughing so hard because right after she says that, another character in the show says, huh? <laughs> so, so, so then my brother was like, hey, wait, what did she say? And we just kept going back and forth saying like, hey, you got to scrap a daffa flop butt do yet. <laughs> and we just couldn't remember what the line was. And so we just kept variations upon variations of, you know, Hey, you got to flap and nap the bump, cap and a snap. And it was just like something about it really, really uh, made me laugh till I was crying. Like my face hurt and like I was just like collapsed. It was, it was, uh, it was very fun. And that right. (laughs) And I need to look up that clip and to see if I know what she actually said. And, uh, you know. Not that it wasn't, you know, we got a scooter poop the rat to tap. It's like, come on. It's probably, have you done your taxes? Well, that that is um, very indicative of an improviser, like somebody who riffs off an initial funny thing. Like that is when I I know I've come across like somebody in the realm of comedy or improv. It's something they're like, oh no, I can take that thing and take it further. You know, like I can yes and it. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very true. Um, I uh, the the thing I you? would contribute to this would just be first and foremost, I think I remember the scene you're talking about. I've seen the whole Mandalorian series, and I think I remember that battle. And I too do not remember what was said, so we will we will never know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Slap that scooter back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
right? Um, <laughs> please integrate the reaction of that guy and just going Arr! like in this in this video somehow. Uh, my thing honestly is like I can't I can't think of a specific time that like I've laughed so hard like they're like an iconic time with my family because there's been a bunch like we're generally pretty easygoing and silly in that. But for me was this one time where I tried to over exaggerate how much I was enjoying myself and laughing. And I remember in it was like high school days where we, we had this giant stone table uh, that was like the family dining table that we'd eat dinner at every Sunday. And it was one Sunday was there and we we're getting into something that we we're laughing about. And I decided to be like, I'm going to like make it funnier by exaggerating my laugh. So I like threw my head back and I was like, ha ha ha. And I, went, I threw my face forward and slammed my face into the stone table and my nose started bleeding and so like meanwhile i'm just like ha, 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 but i'm like blood's coming out i'm like i'm upset but i'm also laughing yeah and i was just like it goes to show where like That's sometimes so rough over committing can hurt you i would have loved so. to have seen that yeah yeah <laughs> lesson learned we're having fun <laughs> wow yeah Next question. Oh <laughs> Jennifer, who do you spend the most time with in your family? That could be immediate or extended. I guess that would be my spouse. Or do you mean like... Let's go blood family. Blood family. Uh, definitely my mom then. Definitely mm. my mom. Yeah. Why? What, what, what um, is that? She's... Uh, she's close well my dad's close too but my mom's just easier to be around sometimes uh in the fact that she's a little less judgmental uh, than my father mm. um but she's more high maintenance because she's kind of like reverted to that four-year-old state but uh i still uh find it easier to be around sometimes yeah and she's cuddly <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. I, 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 as a, maybe it's just stereotypical as a gay son, it's my mom I spend most of my time yeah. with. However, if my brother were closer, I feel like it would be him. Because my brother and me, like, at first we got along horribly. Like, growing up, we would battle, we would fight. I remember, like, fist fights, like, getting pinned to the ground. Uh, he's the reason I have a scar on this thumb, because oh. he almost cut off my thumb one time during a fight. Uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. And then we matured, and we started relating, and that's where, like, basically, it's it's where I, like, discovered everything in terms of, like, being okay with being, like, different and weird and a nerd, because we were into, like comic books video games board games tabletop like strategy games that we were like super into it and we spent so much time together especially during kind of like our teen years going into like early adult years uh so i feel like that would have continued if we were close but now he's like ottawa so yeah, yeah. what about you david um for me again it's my older brother tof especially now that we've lived together for a couple months um yeah We've just been able to spend more time together, which has been nice because I think before that, you know, it would just be like visits every once in a while and then um, maybe long phone calls. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, this is the most time we've been able to spend together as adults. And I'm very thankful for that. It's been very enjoyable. Aww. We have very long, often philosophical discussions, political discussions, um, personal, like, yeah. We leave no stone unturned with each other, and I'm really, really grateful. That's great. Um, it, when you say Tof, is that short for Topher, Christopher, or is it just Tof? Uh, yeah, or is it yeah, short yeah, yeah. for Tofu? His name's Christopher. I'm really hoping It's short for Tofu. <laughs> well, actually, he's worked at a um, uh, Vietnamese or a Thai restaurant, I think, um, and he introduced himself as Tof, and they're like, oh, Tofu? Um, and it's like he had that nickname then, Tofu, Tofu. at this Thai restaurant. And um, then, yeah, he also goes by Furbs or Furbination <laughs> with some other family members. Um, that just yeah, smacks just of, of a lot like, of nicknames over the years. Either Furby for me, and I just picture him as this yeah. creepy robotic doll thing, or as mm -hmm. like, uh, fuck, fuck, uh, Black Eyed Peas. Uh, Fergie. Fergie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah no it's christopher's Christopher right amazing. christopher benation oh god christo tofer it's like yeah it's round and around yeah. yeah i did bring us to our last question 
what was it like growing up in a queer family or growing rather growing up queer in your family to Jen? Wow. <clears throat> um, my thought, my uncle is, was gay. He has passed now. And so um, I, well, he was my dad's best friend for many years. And so um, my dad's best friend was gay. So it made it, I think he probably would have gone through everything he would have gone through with me, with my uncle coming out to him and they were very close. And so that was, uh, made it super easy. And my mom just was like, I don't understand why you'd like to kiss girls. And I was like, well, it's because you don't want to kiss girls. And she was like, okay, and that was basically <laughs> it. Like, sense. yeah, I, I, <clears throat> you know, I had been dating girls since in my early, early teens, but I probably didn't really discuss it with my family until I was like in my twenties. Cause I, it was still something that I was scared about because of the society pressure. I was more pressure from society and being a certain way. But I think if I would have come out to my family younger, it would have been okay. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty blessed that my parents support me. And my dad loves hot women. So now we just have something more to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> He's an old pervert. So we'll be out and he'll be like, oh, she's pretty. And I'll be like, yeah, dad, but you can't talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking dad. Yeah. Uh, what about for you, David? Um, pass. No, just pass. <laughs> You're allowed to. We it was uh, consent um, here. It was was just a journey um and i might talk about this more in like an episode about religion or something because yeah it's just it's just a big big part of where i came from so my mom was a missionary kid and my father grew up catholic then converted to um what is it evangelical christianity pentecostal something like that uh a bit later in life so i grew up going to um youth groups, uh, Christian school for three years. I worked at a Christian like Bible camp for three years and like was really trying to like, get into it. But I knew like in high school that it, that I was already having these feelings of like questioning. So by the time I was like, uh, like 14 or whatever, like I knew I was bisexual or like queer or whatever. I was telling that to some close friends, but I never talked about it in church. Then in 2013, I like told a Christian about it or 2012, I told a Christian about it. And that was a whole episode. Um, because after I told him, I kind of developed a crush on him. Then I tried to tell my family about it. And they like weren't sure how to be supportive. Um, because at the time, I had really wanted to be abstinent. Um, because I had so internalized that like being gay was not okay. Um, so I got baptized and like tried to like take a vow of celibacy and it didn't work. I found it very frustrating. Um, and it was probably like the most depressed period of my life. Um, oh. And I think because I think because my family just didn't know what to do with any of that, let alone like the queer issues, but just like emotional issues, unfortunately, um, it got, yeah, just like really tough. So by the time... I was thinking about, I was in my third term of college and then I was, we were coming up to this opportunity of either um, I was going to go on a mission trip or I was going to pretty much live in Vancouver. And I tried the mission trip for a couple of weeks and then I went to Vancouver instead of living with family because I was just like, I think I want to be independent. I think I need to not <laughs> live uh, in New Jersey anymore. I just need to like figure some stuff out and... Yeah, so that's what I did. And How brave. Yeah, and so yeah amazingly. Like, yeah, so I don't know. So <laughs> I have I have many thoughts on that situation, but it was definitely um, a very formative experience, just like you know, trying to figure out that stuff and having to like teach myself that I'm okay just as I am, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, you are. Yeah, and that's super brave and that's super impressive to go through that journey and to face the hurdles that came with that. I think like each queer person goes through obviously a journey, like everyone goes through a journey in life, but there is 
I keep seeing these themes of either it has to do with like confusion or repression of something uh, because of that confusion. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's not, maybe it's not even like an own personal confusion that comes from just sort of like a, uh, a repression that is in re reaction to something else, be it religion or family or friends or something. And mine fell into the confusion phase. Like I didn't feel like I had much in the way of repression because I was fortunate enough to be in a fairly progressive family. Um, and I knew that my brother and sister both, even before I had really come to terms with my sexuality, had had relations with same sex. And they both are now in essentially the equivalent of heteronormative relationships now. But I knew because of them willingly exploring that, my parents not really denouncing it in any way, shape or form, uh, that I was just like, I was like, okay, this stuff's okay, this is fine, but I'm like, I like I had an attraction to men and women, but I just didn't know to what extent, right? I didn't know where I, like my threshold lay and that one didn't come until later in life. Uh, the only kind of repression, kind of fear based of like removal would probably had come from my dad. My dad was much more conservative when I was younger. And I remember there was comments and things that he did or said that made me afraid of what I was feeling. So that was a close up to it, but I wouldn't say it was nearly as significant as something that probably what you went through, David. And it wasn't until like finally after just kind of being approached by women, dating women, and every single one of those instances basically getting nowhere past of like a little bit of kissing, you know, like a little bit of like touching. I was like, I, I, that's always where I hit this threshold. And I was like, why is this? Why is this? And it wasn't until uh, finally, like in my college years, I finally like explored dating men and fi figured out why I had a threshold with women. Mm -hmm. I think that um, one of the things that uh, scares me with my in-laws, um, I, I, I come from a very uh, open family, but um, my husband's uh, family is very religious and they're from Jamaica where being gay is uh, still a huge no-no. Um, and I don't know of a time where my sexuality would come up in my interactions with them. But if it ever did, I, I'm not ashamed of myself. And, you know, I, you, one of his friends was, we were driving in the car and he had said something, um, not homophobic, but kind of was like acting like a douche about it. And I was like, well, it's really offensive and I'm gay and I don't appreciate that. And, and um, so I don't know what that future is going to look like and I don't know how to maneuver around it, but I am nervous about it. Sure. So I'm not going to be ashamed of myself in that situation, I'm not gonna hide myself, but I also don't think I'm gonna show up with a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, and we should, like also, <laughs> we should note also, we should note also that as Jen becomes uh, more emotional, her voice gets raspier and she sounds like a sex phone <laughs> operator. It's like just what she does. Hey baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's interesting. I think obviously you can't denounce the fact that family is so, you are the children of your parents and you will be a product of that upbringing and what you go through. And sometimes that's positive. Sometimes that is negative or just filled with fear in that it's um, it's really difficult, but it, it's, yeah, it, it's, I don't, it's almost like I don't even know how to relate because I, I am a gay man. And so I was never hetero, right. I was born that way to be like, how I can almost compare it to somebody who was, had we growing up because I'm sure we all had those fears and things that we we're concerned about growing up but there's something I think that is special about being queer because it's about like we're all like teenagers and going through hormones and and confusion and stuff like every human on the planet is going through that but in being queer and it having to do with your sexuality so it's almost like your romantic and sexual attraction to another there's this whole other layer around it that like it, it yeah it's <clears throat> It just makes for, because we all innately want connection, right? And so yeah. there's almost a little bit more of an ease of access for somebody who is hetero, who just kind of like, oh, well, the vast majority of what I'm seeing in the public eye and what I'm taught and told and that is like, makes sense because that's what I'm feeling. And so I'm going to go through it. But for somebody who's not feeling that or feeling a derivative of that to be like, thrown in with all the other shit bag that it's being a teenager going through high school and stuff like that. It is, it's just hard because you're like, oh, well, I want to connect with people, but I'm like, I'm confused about what connecting means and why I should connect and how deeply I should connect. Because there are some people out there who have like the factor of like, 
um, they might be sexually attracted to men and women, but romantically attracted to only one of the two, or, yep. you know, throw in the non-binary as well. <clears throat> uh, so that's, it's, yeah. it's a big old confusion game. Yeah. And family, I think to me at the end of the day, no matter what, I've always, know, I've always thought of this in the queer space, that it's ultimately about wanting to love yourself and love somebody else. And I don't know why any family should, parents should stop that. That's your, your one goal in life is about loving your kid and making sure they're happy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really uh, astute that you pointed out that sense of like confusion just about connecting with other people, because that yeah. was certainly my experience um, through high school. Like I just had a very, I think, you know, if I could just like look back and just like pat myself on the head, I think because I didn't really accept myself, I felt like I didn't deserve friendships of any kind, let mm -hmm. alone like really uh, like relationships. So when you layer on this sense of like just weirdness about dating or about, um, you know, who you're attracted to, I was just like very withdrawn and I kept very surface level friendships for a lot of high school because deep down, like I just didn't really accept part of myself. And I think that made it hard to feel authentic with other people. So I think the closer like as a society, we can just allow kids to be kids and allow teenagers to like experiment like within reason and like without <laughs> shame and all this stuff is because like when like sexuality is so goofy because it's what you said, you could be sexually attracted to someone, but like romantically, maybe it's not the right uh -huh. thing. But as soon as you bring queerness into it, it starts to have this stigma and yeah, it just takes a lot of time when really like, you know, young people in relationships like teenagers and children, like they shouldn't be having sex right away. <laughs> like they should just be allowed to just like be attracted to each other or whatever. I don't know. Am I making mm -hmm. sense? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like. 100%. Because I, My... I tied that back to. Sorry, go Jen. I, I was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, talking to. Um, uh, a young person in my family, I won't out them. And uh, uh, they were telling me about how they thought that the couple girls in their class were cute and how that they, uh, one of them was their girlfriend at one point. And I said, did you think any of the boys were cute? And the look on his face was so shocked. And he was just like, like, what's your ankle with this lady? And then he whispered it in my ear and he goes, yeah. So it's so really cute. And I'm like, he's totally okay to feel that way. Like that is, yeah. that is awesome. And if you think some of the boys are cute and some of the girls are cute, that's all good. And he was like, shut up. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? As much as you can talk about it with a kid under nine, uh, 10, but um, yeah, it was just that. Did you think any boys were cute? And he's like, who are you asking that question? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and I think, there's a good point in that like yeah you want kids to go out there and experiment like that is just and, and like you say because like you're not just teaching your kid about going out exploring and learning from mistakes you're also teaching them about how to like engage safely into sexual and romantic relations right you're, you're teaching both of those things as you raise those kids and so it is important for uh, a kid to make mistakes and all sorts of things not just about relationships and that is like go run in a field trip and you know skin your knee in addition uh -huh. go and and have relations with different people of any gender right you know if you go you know as far as you want but keep in mind it's like be smart about your sexual interactions be safe you know like only do it with people who feel you're safe with and it's consensual and all that wonderful stuff but like the reason we, i think we all discovered where we lay in the sexual spectrum was because we did that experimentation. We tried those things out, right? I tried a bunch of stuff with women and I kept hitting this threshold, threshold. I was like, oh, I can love a woman and I can get very deep with her, but not on a physical sense. And so that's what ultimately defined me as a gay man because I was like, well, what I want in a relationship, like a full blown relationship is the sexual and the romantic. And unfortunately, or not fortunately, but like, you know, sexually, I only want to be with men. And so that's, kind of where it lay at, at the end of the day. Um, but there's women who I feel I've fallen for. Yeah. Oh gosh, hair <laughs> toss from Jen, yeah. <laughs> We've already established that I've dated somebody in my life who uh, was basically a male version of you, so there you go. It's true, it's true. If I, were, if I had a penis, I'd be on lockdown a long time ago. 
<laughs> right. Uh, amazing. Um, I thought that was some very insightful stuff. Uh, I think we need to go into a little bit of fun for the day. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. Next up is the fun of the show. We're going to play a little game today called Dramatic Break. This is a game David and I came up with from our inspiration of the improv world, where we have taken a pre-written script that was picked from one of the very famous films that we all know well and dearly called Mean Girls. Uh, classic queer piece of pop culture. And what's happening here is we're going to play a bit of a like king of the mountain of like who can stay straight faced in this whole thing, who can not break. Uh, and the other two people are going to try to make them break. So we're going to kick it off with Jen being the person on the top of the mountain, the straight face, the non-breaker. David and I are going to do whatever we want. Yeah, why do you keep calling it straight face? I know, I should. Uh, <laughs> non-breaking. Boring. The boring character. The boring character. The, the voice of reason, I think, is the term you use The now. voice of reason. Um, will be... So this is on page 26, 26 of the document. of the document, okay. right. yes and um we're going to try to overact goof do whatever you want you can add lines you can use voices and that and we're going to try to make jen break if jen breaks somebody is going to take her place and jen will become one of the breakers uh yeah. the scene we are dealing with is when all the ladies of the cast get together at uh, i think it's regina's house and uh they're meeting up there for a little bit of context to our audience the characters being played jennifer is katie David is Karen, Regina, and we'll be doing stage direction. And myself will be doing Gretchen and Mrs. George. Okay, so interior, Regina's house, continuous. The girls enter. In the living room, Regina's seven-year-old sister, Kylie, is watching MTV and giving a large teddy bear a lap dance. I'm home! As, one, as the girls head upstairs, Mrs. George, an energetic blonde, bursts out of the kitchen. Hi! Hi! TGI, it's Friday. You made it through the week. This, this is, is Katie. This is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jen is this playing is Katie. Katie. <laughs> right? Jen is only playing Katie? Only Am Katie. I only playing Katie? You're only yeah. Katie. Oh, I'm only Katie. Oh, and now <laughs> they're like, they're the guests. We'll make them the main person. Still don't have a line yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then Mrs. This George is, says, Mrs. George says, hey, hey, TJ, it's Friday. You made it through the week. This is Katie. Hi, sweetheart. Katie looks at Mrs. George's chest. Through her t-shirt, we see two big grapefruit boobs with very long rock hard nipples. Welcome to our home. Mrs. George grabs Katie and hugs her. Ow. You want anything? Don't be shy, honey. There's no rules in here. I'm not like a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Right, Regina? Please stop talking. I'm going to make you guys a Friday treat. Katie runs upstairs and joins the other girls in a cramped plain bedroom. Regina is looking through a dresser drawer for something. I like your room. <laughs> <laughs> This is my parents' room, ass kiss. Regina pulls a bottle of rum out of her mother's underwear drawer and heads to the hall. The girls follow. This is my room. Regina opens the door to her huge bedroom. It looks like something out of cribs. Four poster bed, Moroccan throw pillows, etc. Katie looks at a bulletin board full of snapshots. They all feature Regina. One is a large picture of Regina and Aaron as last year's spring fling king and queen. Regina takes a swig of rum and passes the bottle to Karen, who drinks and... P Karen? Who drinks and passes it to Gretchen, who drinks and passes it to Katie, who drinks. Not that. Mm. It starts to burn. Katie coughs. Regina opens an armoire to reveal a kick-ass stereo. She puts on girly pop music. I never should have brought these capri pants. How many times do I have to tell you? The gap is for all people. I hate my calves. God, my hips are so huge. At least you can wear skirts. I'm so long-waisted. <laughs> Oh, Jen, you're out. 
All right, David, you're up. You're now going to be okay. the, the uh, voice of reason. Okay, okay. Taking it from Katie's line. Before I met the plastic, I thought there was just fat and skinny. Apparently, there's an infinite number of things that your body can go wrong. My hairline's weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. The three girls look at Katie. It is her turn. My vagina has really bad breath when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> Regina studies Katie for a beat. You know what? Katie... I'm sorry, David. You <laughs> smiled enough to break there. Okay. Moving to me, I am now the voice of reason, taking from Regina. Okay. You know what, Katie? You're like actually really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? You think you're really pretty? Well, I mean, like, I didn't say that. The way I think about it, there's ugly, there's pretty, and then there's average. You and me are average. Voice over. Voice over. <laughs> Katie. For, for Katie. For Katie, Jennifer. He laughed. I made him laugh. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> okay, now it's back to Jen. What just happened? Back to Jen. Jen. I made Robert George. laugh. Mrs. Jen, George enters voice. with a tray of frozen daiquiris, little umbrellas and all. Five and six is happy hoor. The, the girls each take a drink. That's you, Robert. Thanks, Mrs. Jordan. Thanks, Mrs. J. Regina cracks up. <laughs> Mrs. J? Mrs. G. Oh my God, you are so dyslexic. Karen is embarrassed. Is there alcohol in this? Mrs. George picks up the family dachshund and holds it. I'm going to shank one of you with a knife. No, no, okay, no, honey, <laughs> nope. I made Jen laugh. <laughs> Moving to David. Okay, uh, at Mrs. line. No, honey, what kind of a mother do you think I am? <laughs> Why? Do you want a little? If you're gonna drink, I'd rather you drink <laughs> No, thanks, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm really fine. I'm well, don't totally be shy. Fine. Right, girls? The dog chews on one of Mrs. George's nipples. She... <laughs> <laughs> okay, David broke. <laughs> she can't feel it. Mom, They're moving to me for straight laced. Go fix your hair. You girls keep me young. I love you so much. Gretchen pulls a scrapbook out of the drawer. Oh my God, I can't believe you still have this. What is it? It's our burn book. We cut girls pictures out of the yearbook and then we have a seance where we summon the devil. Robert, what are you doing? Are you <laughs> I'm adding lines. <laughs> okay, so back yeah, to Robert Jen. made himself laugh. Yeah, Robert made himself <laughs> laugh. I do that a lot. So it's my turn. It's just a joke. Uh, Veronica Ryu is a Grotsky little biatch. Still true. Madison Riley is a fat ass virgin. Still half true. Katie takes the book and flips through it. She sees a school photo of the heavyset girl from the beginning, Emmeline Gerber, the future Mrs. Egg McMuffin. A heavy metal looking girl, Amber De uh, D'Alessio masturbates with a frozen hot dog. School photo of Janice. Janice Ian Dyke. That's so mean. You should write something in it. Do it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, do one. We got to find a book no. with somebody. No. Nobody will ever say it. I don't want to. Why? Because you're so nice and we're evil. No. Who's not? Who's trying not to laugh right now? <laughs> I think Jen. <laughs> I think Jen was supposed to be serious. Cutting it there. Okay. Well done. Well done. Thank you for playing along. Yeah. That was a little fun, dramatic break 
from Mean Girls. <laughs> it was fun. brings us to the close of the show. Um, we want to summarize. What's some of your favorite thoughts, starting with Jen? Uh, what's some of your takeaways from today's show? Um, I think when I was listening to you all speaking, one of the things that came into my brain that I didn't share about, but I was marinating on was um, how people say being gay is a life choice and not something that we're born with and or a lifestyle. And for me, as a woman who dates men and women, I feel that uh, it, 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 it wasn't a choice for me. It was something that was very organic, but I do agree with the life experiences that I have that are different. When I'm with a, a group of my um, queer friends and a group of my straight friends, when I'm with uh, my queer friends, I can be who I am, my chosen family. I can be who I am. And um, sure, there's judgment on what I'm wearing, but not who I'm kissing. And um, <laughs> with... Uh, uh, straight friends, I, if I'm like at a party and there's hetero men there and straight, uh, hetero women, I go into defense mode. It's an immediate, uh, who, what guy am I talking to now? And is he in a relationship? Is that girl going to get mad at me? That guy's been looking at my boobs for like an hour. Like there, it's like this foreign land that I, that, that is sometimes difficult for me to maneuver and I, and I feel more awkward and uncomfortable in that world. Um, where in a queer world, I feel a level of acceptance. And, and so that chosen family of mine, whether I bring a female around or I bring a male around is um, really amazing to me. And so if there is a lifestyle I choose, I would choose that one just based on how cool the people are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I love it. I love mine, mine is quick. It is largely about how. Oh, what do you say? I rambled on too long. Yeah. Okay, yours much, is yeah. done, Robert. David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's the host of this show? That. So anyway, um, <laughs> muting Robert, and I will close. No. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say your thing, David? Because I missed oh, no. <laughs> Okay. Okay, great. All I was going to say was literally just that um, we all obviously have faced like issues of varying degrees with our family and it's caused trouble for us, uh, even in dealing with being queer people and that. But what I noticed is that at the end of the day, we all really care about our family and we still hold them really closely and we have a person in it that we really hold dearly. So our families are both our source of love and turmoil in life from beginning <laughs> sure. to end yeah well that's intimacy right is mm -hmm. you you take all the highs and you take all the lows and that's part of being human that's my closing mm -hmm. thought Wrap amazing us up, robert <laughs> thank you so much for joining us jennifer perrin uh being our oh, guest it was a pleasure and if you noticed a drastic camera change that was my fault <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. You've been listening to Tissues of the Day. This was episode seven. Um, if you like our show, please be sure to like and to subscribe. Follow us. Our podcast can be on all sorts of different platforms. Um, and we are on Bitbutton on YouTube is the channel if you're looking for us. And so what I say out to you, remember, it's the Tissues of the Day. So stay wet there, internet. Yeah. Gloppy and gloopy. Thank Sex you, with David. Me is like the internet. It's accessible to everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave it there. Done. <laughs> <laughs>